What's up guys, welcome back to another video here on the channel. So first things first, um, let me get this out of the way. Um, I am messing around with my volume, so if I'm a little too loud, I apologize for that. I can let me know and I can kind of adjust that. I know my past few videos have been too quiet, um, <clears throat> but we'll, we'll mess around with that. So what we are doing today is we are taking a look at Team of the Week. A couple of things I have to talk about in addition to that volume issue. Um, obviously, you might hear it in my voice. I'm not feeling 100% today, so I did want to get this video out anyway. Just forgive me if there's any coughs or anything like that. Um, but I want to get this video out. It is coming up on 8 p.m., which is about seven hours after these cards are released. They've had some time to settle. They will, of course, settle throughout the week. We'll look a little bit at last week's Team of the Week to see if we can spot any trends as well um, when we get to the investment portion of our video, which will probably be the second half. We're going to do a, a performance review of each card, and then we'll talk <coughs> Excuse me, a little bit investment on the back end. Um, last note is tomorrow... Um, career mode episode three will be out uh tomorrow uh, on thursday and then episode four will be out on tuesday so be on the lookout for that people who are interested in that series it's a fairly good one so um let's open up rafael leal hence his in extinctness uh same thing with ben Yedder, same thing with holland although for a different reason uh no he can oh gosh darn it i do want to open warner um musiala fun story about that card this guy could be really good uh, Trap is a 87. We'll talk a little bit about him on investments. Sorloth looks like an excellent card to be interested in. Dressard doesn't look bad. This guy looks terrible for links, but he's interesting because he's 5 star, 5 star. That guy, <coughs> this center back looks really good. This guy looks okay, but we won't take a look. Of course, the two silver informs could be helpful um, if you're looking at silver star stuff. And we got a bronze inform for the first time in quite a long time. So. Let's uh, let's move Leal back here. So, the reason this card is extinct is because he can make his accelerate be lengthy. Okay, there's a lot of hype right now about lengthy accelerate styles. Okay, now I was actually <laughs> this is the second time I've recorded this uh, because I was talking about accelerate styles and I <clears throat> kind of lost my train of thought. I want to make a graph of them. Okay, so there's three different kinds of accelerate styles. All right, there is the Controlled, which uh, Rafael Leal happens to be um, uh, at at base here. Maybe we'll get to somebody else. There's obviously Lengthy, which I just spoke about. Um, and then, is there anyone else that's, like, explosive? Ah, see? So if we put an engine on Werner, he turns explosive. So those are the three different kinds. Now, people have noticed that Lengthy seems to be very overpowered in the game. So let me show you why that's happening. Okay, so I have paint here, right? So let me get my brush size a little bit bigger. So let's imagine this is the graph, excellent straight lines, thank you, of acceleration rate. So acceleration rate, and this will be time, okay? So over time, players with a controlled style, let's make control, uh, let's make controlled uh, green, okay? Controlled players will go at a constant rate. Their acceleration will increase at a constant rate over time, okay? So they will get faster and faster and faster over time until they reach their max speed, okay? Let's pretend each of these players it has 99 pace, 99 acceleration. Let's not change those numbers, okay? We're just talking the difference between explosive, lengthy, and controlled, okay? So green line is C, all right? Now, explosive players are very quick out of the blocks very quick but then they kind of slow down towards the end of their curve before they reach their top speed okay so these are explosive players okay very quick off the mark but then they lose some of their acceleration rate okay and then they eventually still do reach their top speed now lengthy players are kind of the opposite so they're kind of the bottom of this curve and then they cross up here now they are accelerating quick. They they kind of reach their top speed even more quickly. So you can see right here, if if <clears throat> excuse me, if this let's make the the top of the line gray. This is our max speed at 99, right? Um, obviously, all these lines should should get there. But you see how accelerate um, makes a big difference in how fast these players are getting here. Because after I don't know, let's say whatever this uh, this mark is. Let's say this is uh, 10 yards. Right? Maybe this should be distance, time, whatever. It really, it, however you want to think of it, is really kind of the same. 
20 yards, this is, these are just made up numbers to illustrate a point, 30 yards, right? So after 30 yards, the accelerate player is only here on their top speed, the controlled player is in the middle, and the lengthy player is already at the top, right? Excuse me, so they actually get to their top speed more quickly. <clears throat> so right now they're running at 99 speed here. This guy's only running at whatever, like uh, 65 of, uh, you know, 70% of, of his total speed, okay? And so that's why explosive players are not as valuable. Now, there are many, many other factors that come into play here. Strength being one of them. Actual sprint speed and acceleration being another. But when your sprint speed is as fast as this guy, <coughs> excuse me, you can get your strength up to 98 and still having 84 agility and balance, this is a tremendous card, okay? Now, his price range is 300k. Obviously, people value him more highly than that. I don't know how you kind of want to deal with that, but if I had him, I think I'd hold for a minute. I actually think I'd hold for a bit. So, anyway, Lau's going to be great. Uh, Timo Werner, and we're actually talking we're talking um, investments at the same time. That's probably just easier. So, Timo Werner <coughs> can get to that explosive. Now, would we want to put an explosive chemistry, or a chemistry style that makes him explosive on here? No. And... By the way, to determine the accelerate, there's a a factor that has to do with agility and strength and height and, and X Y Z. You can look that up if you're interested in it. But um, but interestingly, he can't get to lengthy. Okay, so his best bet is probably throw a bunch of pace on him, even if it's like a hawk or something. Um, actually, this might be really good because it makes his shooting really really excellent. And he is a, a default left wing, also has center forward. Uh, sorry, left mid, also has center forward, but not striker. So that's an interesting card as well. <coughs> 84k excuse me actually seems okay especially since he's giving german bundesliga links um solid card actually solid card you know if he falls around the 50k mark um over the weekend league at some point over the weekend could be interesting uh musiala i did say there was a story about this card he's got some really good position versatility at cam cm and left mid he's going for 45k now but i actually packed him this morning or, sorry, early this afternoon. Oh, no. Yesterday? Yeah. When he was selling for, like, 73, and I sold him for, like, 73K because I knew he would drop, right? If you pack a team of the week right away, always sell. I sold him for 73K. He's worth 45 now, and he will keep dropping. Again, more Bundesliga, uh, even better Bayern links this time. Can you make him... No, see, his agility is so high, so you can't make him lengthy. But, uh, wow, his dribbling is absolutely bananas. Interesting card. He'll keep falling, though, so be, be careful with that. Milikovic Savage, uh, very high-rated in form, lengthy at base, which is actually really, really nice. See how low his agility is and how high his strength is. Um, this is an interesting card. Uh, this year, I think when people use this card, they might be like, oh, wow, he's actually not that bad um, because of that lengthy sprint style. Um, so, yeah, an interesting card. If uh, Again, if you pack him today... I would say get rid of him. If you pack him later on, he might be worth keeping or he might be worth picking one up of just to stock the club. Sorloff is interesting. I will absolutely be picking this guy up because you know who he reminds me of is a guy I recommended last week, Shomardov. I don't think that's how you spell his name. But Shom... Yeah, there we go. Like, these guys are just identical twins. Look at them. Uh, Sorloff has a little more sprint speed, while he, uh, Shomardov has a little more acceleration. Um, shooting is eerily similar, 84, 85, 82, 85, 92, uh, 86, very, very close. Passing is 76 versus 74. Dribbling is very close again, 82, 84. Defending, who cares? And then, actually, Sorloff is significantly better physically. These guys as a pairing would be insane. Um... Really, really interesting. He also has lengthy because he, uh, Shimmerdov can only get to lengthy if you give him a, um, a, uh, architect, I think. Yes, he goes to lengthy. Now, I did recommend buying him if he fell below 15k. I know some people did buy at 15k. Um, he's 16k now, so you're making a K per card. <laughs> I know it's not a great investment, um, but people have been hyping this guy up and he is excellent. So if you've been playing one in your team, he's probably been earning your coins that way too. So, just a little shout out to uh, to last week. Not a <coughs> not a banger, but anyway, given how similar these cards are, I would expect Soloth to drop into that same sort of range, and then probably bounce back up um, as he gets more rare out of packs. So definitely one to watch out for here. Trossard is interesting. Premier League Belgian left wing, solid stats, explosive though. So 
interesting. But he can also play cam and striker and left mid. So that's what makes him interesting there. The uh, uh, multi-position eligibility. This guy's got five-star skills, five-star weak foot. That's why he's interesting. Also good stats across the board. Um, also great position and eligibility. Same as Trossard, actually. This guy's ridiculous. So lengthy on default. Can't pass or shoot. Right? <coughs> Excuse me. Can't even dribble that well. But... If you're looking for some sprint speed, boy, is this guy got it for you. Um, with a shadow or with a... Uh, actually, yeah, with a shadow would be great. Look at him. 89 overall uh, sprint speed. 87 defending with a lengthy, lengthy style. He's discard price. Pick this guy up. He will pair with your Marquinhos or your Kempembe or whoever you want to use in the league on. Um, even if you want to... Like, is David Alaba even in the game this year? He's only other Austrian. Um... But I don't think I've really seen him in the game yet. So no one's really packed him yet. Yeah, he would pair nicely with a David Alaba, that's for sure. If you're looking for, like, a kind of hybridize, um, get a couple Austrians in there, and then, you know, get some Real Madrid players, get some um, some Ligue 1 players, that, that would totally work. So definitely would recommend that guy. Um, bronze Inform, we have not had a Bronze Inform, and I don't know how long. Look at the boost they gave him. Plus 12, plus 12, plus 12, plus 12, plus 12, plus 11. Still not a great card overall, right, of course, but... Uh, makes bronze pack method a little more interesting if you're doing that. <coughs> Excuse me, so sorry. Uh, ben Yedder, just a, a crazy card in the game every year. Explosive, though. Um, extinct at 200k, that's way too low a price range. I can't believe they thought that would be okay. Um, <coughs> he's probably a 300, 350 coin, uh, 1,000 coin card. Um, so if you, if you have one, I would hang on to him. He will definitely... Oh, sorry. He will almost definitely go above that price. Erling Holland, goodness me, oh my, is he the best player in the game this year? Um, this <laughs> this one's to watch is at 1.8. His normal card's at 400. Now, do not buy his normal card. His normal card, when supply comes back in, his gold will go way down. It'll probably go back down to like 250 or something like that. Maybe maybe 300, whatever. But you'll lose a ton of money if you buy his gold card. So don't do that. His inform's actually not buyable right now, and this card does not feel like that bad of an investment to me. So it's really interesting because he's going to get informs left, right, and center. This card, this exact card, might end up at like a 95 by the end of the year. Because he's also, excuse me, going to get that bonus from uh, Man City getting all the wins, I'm sure. So <clears throat> really, really excellent card. So let's look at this. It's got the same stats. And you can he's lengthy by, by default, so you can actually put a hunter on him if you want to. 95 pace, 96 shooting, ridiculous strength already. At just a stupid card. Just stupid. He is the best card in the game. No doubt about it. His passing is actually not that bad with 76 vision, 76 cross... Uh, sorry, short passing. Long passing is bad. Don't try and long pass with him. But it's really dragged down by his crossing. His free kick accuracy. But even his dribbling is not that bad. Reactions of 90. Ball control of 84. Composure of 87. He is a pure, pure finisher. Best card in the game, in my opinion, right now. Best non-icon. Uh, non-icon, non-hero card in the game. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. So we kind of did both at once, which was interesting. Trap as an 87 um, inform is really interesting to me as well. DeMarcos uh, discard already, which could be a decent discard investment. Um, throw him in a team, he'd actually do fine for you. If Smalling gets to discard, another good discard investment. Um, he could be interesting with the lengthy as well. Klaus, uh, can he get lengthy? No, he's explosive. His agility is way too high. Um... Interesting card, though, nonetheless. Fairly well-rounded with good pace. Um, but, again, he'd have to get all the way to discard to be interesting to me. And that's about it, I think. So, yeah, my big pick, Sorloth, if you're looking for an investment. When he drops, um, I think he'll bounce back up. I think this guy will bounce back up. Those are the two guys I might I might throw a, you know, a couple hundred thousand coins in, see what it ends up. I mean, because this guy is... It, if the worst thing that happens is he doesn't go up and I just discard a bunch and I get my money back, right? So if I buy five of those guys, it's like putting 50,000 coins in the bank is really what it is. <clears throat> and that with the with the potential for him to just rise to the moon, if, if I buy five of those cards, <clears throat> excuse me, let's actually say I buy 10 of those cards, okay, this Danso. I buy 10 of him. Now, two weeks from now, he's at 16K, Okay. I've done nothing except park 100,000 coins. Two weeks from now, he's at 16K. I sell them all on. I make 60,000 coins profit for literally doing nothing, just having them on my transfer list, right? Taking up 10 spots, no big deal. Let's say uh, two weeks from now, he is 
uh, 11,000 coins, right? Uh, with the tax and whatever, I uh, sell them all for 11,000 coins. I basically make nothing, right? I break even, okay? Let's say a week from now, he's 22,000 coins. Now I've made 120,000 coins for doing nothing, right? So just parking my coins, right? So, you know, it's a, it's a, a no-lose situation in my humble opinion. So I did say I want to look at last week's cards. So let me look at some of last week's Team of the Week cards. So we did look at Shemurdov. What was Marquinhos? If you bought Marquinhos at 176, you are laughing now at 210 ish. Um, so I did say when he came out, 250 was probably a little expensive, but not crazy for that card. And on Friday, he was actually his lowest. Now, the reason for this was probably because there was a ton of supply with one to watch coming out. Okay. He stayed low on Saturday, and then he started raising back up the end of the week. Let's see if other cards followed that same. Uh, sort of uh, kind of graph, right? So let's <coughs> excuse me, Modric, we'll take a look at Lozano. Okay, so we look at Lozano. High on Wednesday, high on Thursday, lowest on Friday, low again on Saturday, started rising back up, but not a ton. He didn't have a big bounce back yet. And remember, these guys have been out of packs for like eight hours, so they will bounce back a little bit higher. Uh, Akanji started at 70 whatever, down lowest at 53, back up to 68. I believe I did say that this would be a good buy. Uh, and you're making 10K a card on him now. Sala, again, low point on Friday, 420. Goes back up to 440, 478, 500. He's 500 right now. You buy a Sala at 420, you sell him at five, almost 520, 100,000 coin profit minus tax. Not bad. Luka Modric in for him, 120, goes down to 88, 92. Friday, Saturday is buy time. Now, <coughs> keep in mind, this may not be true about this team of the week, okay? Don't take this as gospel. The, the, one of the potential reasons that this happened was because there was no weekend league, okay? There was no demand for these players to kind of spike them up. So with increased supply, they dropped, right? Makes sense. Now, players like this that are solid in the game, right? Players like Marquinhos, players like Lozano, players like Sala. They might have a spike on Friday when people are buying their teams, right? They might dip even lower on Saturday when people are finishing up games and selling their teams. And then they might go back up on Sunday when there's a big supply of coins from awards and or supply um, of packs as well. So, you know, <clears throat> we're going to have to keep watching this. We're going to have to keep seeing, you know, what's kind of going on week to week with each of these uh, teams of the week. But that is my thoughts on Team of the Week 3. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video, and I will speak to you guys tomorrow for a career mode episode number 3. Alright, thanks. Bye. Say goodbye.